What's going on guys, Andrew Pillick Hockey here back again with another video and don't worry we are going to be seeing more things on the screen very soon because you guys can see the title. We're going to be talking about the Leafs forward depth. Now I'm going to be going into cap friendly very soon here but if you are new to this channel make sure to subscribe I'd really appreciate it. Join the squad uh, I'd appreciate the support and I do appreciate all the ongoing support from all of you guys. Uh, it's it, it does mean a lot. I, I am having a lot of fun making these videos. Uh, so yeah click like and subscribe if you'd like but um, basically I wanted to just give more in-depth thoughts on the Leafs depth because I'm seeing a lot of people upset over losing Andreas Janssen and Kasperi Kapanen. But the way I look at it is, I mean, Andreas Janssen and Kasperi Kapanen are both great players. But the Leafs did what they did last year without Andreas Janssen. And that was technically get into the play-in round or the playoffs, however you want to look into it. He was hurt for the majority of the season. He is essentially going to be replaced by a guy like Nick Robertson, who will be at least a 20 to 25 goal scorer maybe not next year but in the coming years because the guy just scores the light so um, they also have guys like Hallander um, who's going to be coming up who should be a good prospect uh, and then the, the Roman uh, Roman the, the the guy they drafted 15th overall this year I can't I can never wrote on Am Amarov I can never say his name and I can never remember it properly but they have guys that are going to be replacing him within the coming years and I mean, let's not forget the fact that they already have guys like Matthews, Marner, Tavares, Nylander, um, and you don't exactly need another Andreas Janssen type of player. Then you have Kasperi Kapanen, who is very fast but could never really find himself fitting into the top six and working out uh, the way that people thought. He's a great player. He'll probably do fine in Pittsburgh. But again, the Toronto Maple Leafs were trying to replace the scoring speed type with more physicality and just overall team depth and also their blue line. You know they have to get rid of money to acquire it. And the way I look at it is they brought in TJ Brody, Bogosian. They brought in, you know, the trade for Joey Anderson, which we'll get to in a second. He's the, the guy that they traded Andres Janssen for. Um, he will be signed and he could be a 10-goal guy, maybe a 15-goal guy in, on the bottom two lines, hopefully if he pans out. But again, not a big deal. Um, you know, they brought in Joe Thornton. Uh, Wayne Simmons like they used the money and spread it out a lot more which is what you wanted and they were able to re-sign Dermot and Mikheyev so they, they just used the money more wisely but we're going to be looking at the forward depth specifically so I do want to bring up my display capture here because you guys are going to see we're going to be looking at some numbers up top there and please ignore this cap space as you guys can see I have like four or five lines here. Clearly, this is not what the lineup will look like. The Leafs could be running a 20-man roster, so I could be getting rid of seven names from this entire list. But ignore the cap space. It doesn't matter because we're just looking at all the names together. Now, you're also going to see Joey Anderson here. He is a restricted free agent without a contract right now. I just put him at 800K. It could be anywhere to 800K. Um, it could be 700. I, I just wanted his name there so that way you guys could see the depth that they have. Now, there are other options here like uh, Patan and Agostino. Uh, both these guys could play on the fourth line. They probably won't. I mean, Dubas even mentioned Hallander, but I don't think he's ready. Adam Brooks could play. Like, the Leafs have guys that can at least play on that fourth line. So that's obviously a good thing. But this, this isn't being touched. Um, that's pretty much the first line, give or take, however you want to mix this up. Hyman Matthews, Nylander, Marner, Tavares, and you know, it looks like they're going to give, going to give Mikheyev another shot in that top six. So, you know, these guys along with a Kerfoot and maybe even Robertson are kind of all guys you are going to see locked into their positions pretty much. And I do think Nick Robertson will have a chance to at least win that second line spot if he really impresses, who knows. But there is a lot of promising names here, and I even forgot to men mention Jimmy Vc in my little intro there. But again, let's just talk about Mikheyev, 1.6 million, getting him signed, locked in, of course, is very good for the Leafs' uh, depth. Getting him at two years is good because if he comes out this year and has a really good season, well then, okay, great. Ilya Mikheyev is, uh, is going to be fantastic for the Leafs, and that's good. Kerfoot, I wanted to talk about Kerfoot a little bit more because I think people... Um, and, and let me just take this off the screen for a second. I think that a lot of people are looking at the Kadri trade, and Nazem Kadri is my favorite player, but 
you know, Kerfoot doesn't really get injured that often. And this year with the Leafs, he caught the injury bug and he hasn't really shown his potential. And I've seen a lot of people who maybe don't look into, you know, his the way he played in Colorado or don't just look into any reports on him or, you know, they're just they're they're upset. I, and I get it. You can you have every right to be upset. You know, you can have your opinion. And by the way, that Kadri trade save your comments for that because man i'm making a video on the big picture because i think on paper it looked a lot better than how it worked out and i think we can all agree with that but kerfoot's a defensive responsive third line winger who can actually play pretty well on both ends of the ice and he can score so i don't think we've really seen the way he can play he's a little gritty you know he's fast we just have not seen how he can play when he's healthy and that's something that we need to consider he played with like a broken jaw for a good portion of this year the guy's tough I mean he was like eating out of a straw or something or just like shoveling food into his mouth for for how long after I think Jeff Carter hit him but man this video is going to be way too long but that's the reason why I think they have him playing with Jimmy VC. they were you know uh, they might have him playing with Jimmy VC because you know they played together in Harvard and we'll look at that in a second. But um, I think when you put a guy like Jimmy VC, who might not be the most responsible defense defensively with a, a guy like Kerfoot, who is responsible defensively, then it makes a little bit more sense. He can he can make up for what VC is doing and maybe Wayne Simmons is playing there. But um, l let's just look at some of the new guys. Travis Boyd, not going to spend too much time there. 27 years old. He's probably not going to make the Leafs. But he can put up some points in limited games. I mean, 10 points in 24 games played. He had 20, uh, 20 points in 53 with Washington. So it's not like this guy can't put up at least a few points here and there. He is, you know, putting up decent numbers. So he's an option. Um, the recently acquired Joey Anderson, he's only 22. He could pan out to be something decent. Some people are saying he could be a pretty good third line player. You might have just got a very, like a way cheaper version of Andreas Janssen uh, if he can play a little grittier. I don't expect this guy to come in and score 20 goals, but he could be an option for the Maple Leafs on their fourth line as well. 34 points in 44 games played this past season with the Bennington Devils. Um, not bad. I, I really, I really liked the way, um, you know, the, the way he played from highlights that I've seen. So definitely, um, not just giving up on this guy. He's 22 years old. So, uh, a pretty good player for the Marlies and potentially uh, a good player that could fill out the bottom line for the Leafs. Now, Jimmy VC, this is one that I think a lot of people are looking over and thinking, oh, well, you know, why would we pick up Jimmy VC? Well, first of all, for 900 K, that's a steal. He's only 27, 6'3", 202, so he's not a small guy. He's pretty big. He's 6'3". Um, now, also, look at these numbers here. His first year in the NHL, he had 16 goals, right? The second year, he had 17. The third year, he had 17. And this past season, with a really bad Buffalo team, he had 9 goals and 20 points. That 9 goals is the outlier here. He scored over 15 goals three times. And then he played for a, like I said, a terrible Buffalo Sabres team. And he still was able to put up nine goals. That's the outlier. He is going to score over 10 goals this year, regardless of where he plays. I think he's going to end up on this third line. And don't be surprised if he scores 15 goals. Because if Jimmy VC gives you 15, you don't care about the Andreas Janssen deal anymore. Because, I mean, he's you're, you're getting the same production for like 2 million less. Like it's, it's a no brainer to me. Um, that I just, I don't think that that's a bad thing. Barabanov, a lot of people are forgetting about him. We signed him out of the KHL, whether or not he makes the team. I don't know. Um, I think they'll give him a shot because any big Russian free agent, which, you know, they were, cons they were saying he was one of the better ones. Uh, he's a, apparently he's a little chippy. He's not afraid to get into the corners. Uh, he's going to get a chance to play. So 20 points in 43 games the year before that, 46 points uh, in 58 games played. So he can put up big numbers uh, potentially, but probably in the NHL, the guy's a third or fourth liner, more than likely going to be on the fourth line if he gets a shot with the Maple Leafs. Now, Dennis Mulgan, probably not making the Leafs, so it's fair to say we can put him in the minors. Uh, Travis Boyd, I'm not expecting him to be a Leaf, so I'm also putting him in the minors. Korshkov is interesting. I think that he's a good replacement guy. He's physical. He's big. I mean, he's already scored an NHL goal, came up and scored a goal in his first game. 
I like the way he plays. I really want to see the Leafs give him a shot, but I don't believe that he will be on the team either. Of course, we have Pierre Engvall, which is really good depth. We got Joe Thornton, Jumbo Joe, uh, a guy that's going to be a great locker room presence. Uh, clearly a guy that could either be um, used as a scratch here and there or, you know, depending on the Leafs roster size, maybe he is a staple in the lineup. Joey Anderson, I think they'll get him signed, but I just don't see how this guy makes the team immediately because of giving Barabanov a shot, having Angval there, also the potential of Nick Robertson. While I think that I would love to see Robertson play, I'm wondering if the Leafs are going to try to either have him as a guy that's, you know, with the team and then not with the team. I don't know how it's going to work because of, you know, all the new rules and stuff that they're going to have to put in place this year. Who knows if the OHL is even going to be playing. And once he's sent down, I don't believe he can be called back up. So Nick Robertson is a very interesting case. But ultimately, I don't, I, I really don't know what the Leafs are going to do there. So I can't move him. These are the guys that are clearly going to be given big shots to be on this team and get minutes. Like I said, those six guys at the top, you're pretty much guaranteed and including Alex Kerfoot. And I do believe Jimmy VC is going to be playing on his left side and Wayne Simmons probably on the right. Now, there is a potential of playing Jason Spezza there. So that way, you know, you have options. But at the same time, I think that they want to move uh, Joe Thornton around a little bit. So I wouldn't even guarantee he plays on the fourth line all the time. They might want to move him around. Same thing with Spezza. Angval is interesting because if you can see the cap space, let's say the Leafs are trying to be cap compliant right now, right? You could put Pierre Engvall in the minors right now. And look, they're still there. But keep in mind, we have an extra forward here. We also have an extra defenseman. The Leafs could have a 20-man roster. So there is maneuvering around here. But I just wanted to show you guys here that depth is key with the Maple Leafs this year. Where did he just end up? No, he is not a defenseman. But depth is very, very key here. The Leafs have an abundance of different styles of players now. Well, not an abundance, but there's an abundance of skill while also bringing in size with Jimmy VC. He is 6'3". Like I said, he's not going to be overly physical, but he is 6'3". So you've got a bit of size with some skill, potentially a guy that could score 10 to 15 goals for you this year. And especially if him and Kerfoot maybe can find some of that magic from years ago. Then you got Wayne Simmons. Clearly a guy that was brought in to be physical, a guy that maybe could, apparently he's in the best shape he's been in in the past three years, so maybe he finds something that he's lost, and uh, maybe he scores you 10 goals, who knows? I mean, that would be wishful thinking, but let's be honest, he's there to be physical, he's there to be a locker room presence, they need him to be there for the boys, right? Then we got Jason Spezza, just an absolute locker room leader, according to players, I do not know this information personally. But from player accounts, they, they love this guy. Um, he's like a, another dad on the team, of course. But there to be a heart and soul guy, uh, just another leader, and a guy that can put up 25 to 30 points for them. I mean, look at him last year. He was great. Joe Thornton, big size, good at face-offs, you know, great locker room guy, again, coming from player account. And just, just an overall legend of the game. He brings another element to the Leafs great dynamic passer so Joe Thornton obviously makes sense Nick Robertson again this is another flashy uh, style of player a guy that's going to just rip home goals when he's in his prime uh, and I think the Leafs want to give him a shot to start off um, with this team so we'll have to see what happens there but he's a very very interesting player Pierre Engvall he's already been here we know he's got size if he can play like he did when the Leafs went into the bubble then that money is worth it. If not, then he's probably going to have to go. Barabanov, haven't seen too much of him. Again, like I said, very limited highlights and stuff like that. He could be interesting. There's some people that are really high on him. There's some people that think that he's just going to get a shot and it might not work out. But again, lots of options. And that's what you want. You want a team that has a ton of options. When you need a goal and you need a guy to set somebody up, you put out Joe Thornton. When you need some size up front of the net, maybe just to screen the goaltender. It, the game gets simple at some points. Jimmy Vc is six foot three and has a decent set of hands. You toss him out front of the net when you know you don't have another option to put out there. I'm not saying he's the first option. I'm just saying if you need a secondary option because you can't play the big name players all night. 
I wish they could, but they can't. Um, you know, Wayne Simmons brings in that physical element. Same thing with Zach Bogosian, although he's a defenseman, of course. Barabanov, decent set of hands from Russia. Apparently he's a little bit chippy, like I said. That's another option. So the Leafs have brought in a little bit of everything. And that's what we wanted. That's what we wanted from this Leafs offseason is for them to be a little bit different than just a team that scores the lights out. They want to scare you a little bit too. And uh, they wanted to just inject the room with some different personalities. And I think they've done that. So I definitely think this Leafs team is better. I talked about the defense. I talked about their forward group. I do want to make a video about the goaltending next. And as the season goes on or as the offseason goes on, I might even do videos for every single player. I might have to. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you are new, make sure to subscribe. Hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Peace.